The way to become futures literate is through learning by doing. The event that we're at here, the Knowledge Laboratory, really uses this idea of collective intelligence. I bring people together, to work together, to confront the way they use the future. Welcome to this No Lab to evaluate and improve the use of foresight in addressing societal challenges. The term using the future is uh, somewhat unfamiliar uh, for a lot of people because people don't think of using the future like you use a tool. Let's use it, let's see what happens. We can mold it, we can shape it, we can create it, we can play with it. To use the future is to use a time and a place that doesn't exist yet and that allows you freedoms to talk about things in a different way than if you're talking about them in the present. For when we talk about using the future, we should say using the knowledge that we have about the determinants of the future. So in a knowledge laboratory that's aimed at developing people's futures literacy as a learning process, learning by doing, and with each group you talk about something that they care about, their future, something that they think is important. So I want to give you an example. Uh, in Ghana, we are getting a group of people together every month. Creatives, thinkers, lawyers, architects, artists, musicians, to think about, to explore what's happening on the ground. How are people imagining or reimagining our culture, our art, our buildings, with a particular purpose in mind? We know that Africa is going to almost double in the next 20 years will be the youngest continent in the world. And no one has thought through, at least no one that we can see, how to address this, both this opportunity and some people call it a challenge. So I was on a team that went to Myanmar. And what we found in those contexts was that it really allowed people to have new conversations. It allowed them to challenge existing norms. In a place like Myanmar or Burma, you have all sorts of norms related to elders. So initially, if you would have a conversation, the elder would speak and everybody else would listen. But the tools and exercises that we used and created allowed for more collaborative, more participatory means of examining things that were happening today and also the future context. As they talk about it and they think about it, they realize that they have assumptions. They realize that they're using the future for planning or for preparation. We worked with an urban engagement group called Social Life, but also with technology and engineering companies like Arup and also some science fiction writers to imagine different kinds of Londoners in a decade's time, so in 10 years' time. We talk not just about Londoners who are high-flying businessmen and women, but also about Londoners who really care about their city, want to create new kinds of communities. And finally, we talked about Londoners who could really be suffering in a future. So I, I was really very privileged and lucky to work on um, two cases, Nairobi and, and Chennai, where the job was to deliver scenarios of how these cities could look very different or have different futures. And then given those futures, what are the decisions that people in the informal sector could take to empower themselves? And it was not just about generating scenarios about how things could be different. It was very much structured around, well, if you've got these scenarios and you experience what that life could be like, what do you do then? And on the basis of that, generating ideas of how to improve lives. And they begin to question their assumptions. They begin to realize that if they change their assumptions, they change their idea of the future and they begin to see that there are different ways of thinking about the future. And this builds up people's futures literacy. We were working with Greece um, during, just before its kind of fairly significant crisis, and we were working on kind of thinking about a future, the future of democracy, frankly, that was years out, but the reality was the real future, the crisis, was actually only days out. And so, in fact, the question of what is democracy didn't really matter when you were basically saying, does the country even exist? Using the future in, in crisis situations helps us actually deal with crisis. So in a way you can strengthen people, you can uh, build up resilience um, in your society by providing people tools to acknowledge that the first reaction is fear, that there are other possibilities and that they can, by taking a step back, 
using future thinking um, allow them to have hope. Resilience is also about being connected with people. So doing the future thinking, sharing the future images with other people will also help you to accept what is happening now and to have kind of shared dreams of, of better futures. Why is that concept critical for us? Because, I mean, people, particularly poor, vulnerable people, face constant challenges, crises uh, and chronic stresses. And how, and resilience is basically a concept for us to think about how can we strengthen their ability to deal with those um, challenges in a better way and to emerge from them more strongly. One of the elements to think about resilience that strengthen the resilience of individuals and communities is uh, the ability to anticipate. So the point about different ways of using the future and different anticipatory systems is that we're beginning to understand that the, all around us there are many kinds of anticipation, including a form of anticipation that's not preparatory, that's not about preparing, that's not about planning, which is saying, I will allow my idea of the future to change continuously so that I can see the present in different ways. And we can begin to shift the contradiction that is really central to the current context we live in is between diversity and freedom and planning and determinism. And we can become more comfortable with the idea that the unknown and the unknowable is central to our, our values of liberty, but it's also fundamental to our reality that continuously creates the unknown. And so instead of the unknown being an enemy, because it's detrimental to planning, we can find a way to be more balanced between planning and preparation and emergence and novelty.